Hi, I'm Scott from Hard Body Meals, and this is my golden hour. Bam, smack, boom. Oh, oh God, what's going on? Where am I going? Oh. Dad? Yes, my son. I am Deuce, the Deer God. I'm so confused. Who am I? Derek. Your true name is Dercules. Dercules. Wait, what? Yes. You are Dercules, the god of the forest. <laughs> Season five. Hosted by your favorite podcast host, Big Bochi. You already know the deal, mother. What's up? So the clap signifies the start of an episode. But before we begin, everybody, I jacked this from another podcast. I got to be honest, and we've been using it pretty consistently. But hey, this is Connor Holloway from the Golden Hours Podcast. If you guys by chance get any sort of value or entertainment, or you learn something from the episode, just share it with a friend. That's all I ask. Share just, the podcast. Just, if you have a friend, man. If you don't have a friend, you probably shouldn't be listening to podcasts, right? You should probably go somewhere social and work on those skills and sharpen those up. But nonetheless, I am Connor Hallway. And before I introduce our guest on the right, and I'm actually wicked pumped about this episode because it's a like cross between like culinary and business, which is dope. It's like all I really like. We got two elephants in the room. Introduce yourselves. First, we'll, we'll go with Big Freshy. Yo, yo, what up? It's Big Fresh, a.k.a. Abu, checking in. What's up? I'm D. Nice to be here. Much appreciated. <laughs> so D is my friend from home, and he just got back from Alaska, and he said, hey, man, I want to check out the studio. So, Danny, welcome to the world. Thanks for having me. You're a great guy. You too. And so, listen, I'm going to give an epic intro for this one. There's a million, a million things you could eat in this world. Some things aren't healthy. Some are. And some are hard to access. But know what's really hard to get? A bunch of pre-made meals that are both healthy, fresh, and taste good. And, and you hit those proper macros. And you know the exact calories you're putting in your body. Know where you can find that? Hard body meals. This is an advertisement. But to my right, I have Scott. And I want to make sure I say your last name right. It's Brandolini. Brandolini. On my right of hard body meals. Thanks for coming, man. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. Do you want to give a, a quick synopsis of who you are and what you do? How much time do we have? <laughs> I'm Scott Brandolini. He's a, he's a master salesman, so he's ready to go. <laughs> Owner of hard body meals. Um, I am a chef by trade. I uh, got out of the full-service restaurant business to combine my two passions, food and fitness, wellness. And uh, here we are. Now I own Hard Body Meals, performance-based, chef-driven meal prep company. Best meal prep company Whoa. on earth. How, how, many, how many times have you said that? The uh, sales pitch. It's, it's evolved a bit. It was uh, fitness-driven, chef, you know, it, it's just gone. And now it's, it's performance-based, chef-driven. So can you elaborate on what that means? Like performance-based Perf food. Yeah, perform I know it sounds weird, right? Performance-based food. But uh, food's, food's our fuel. Um, for the past 20 years, food was, was uh, fun and, and artistic and all that other stuff. And that's still swimming around in my brain. But, you know, food is our fuel. And it's, it's you know, we all have a, a goal, you know, in the fitness industry and wellness and whatnot where we want to be. So performance based for to to you know to fuel what it is we're trying to do if we're trying to get huge if we're trying to yo <laughs> to, you know uh, if we're trying to step on stage for a bodybuilding competition lose weight uh, get in the ring for an MMA match you know whatever it is there's a there's a goal and there's a there's a certain way to get there based on your diet so at at what point when you were starting it up actually why don't we just go back to the to where like you started so you had started you just always wanted to be a chef or you always loved food oh yeah yeah well i think i defaulted to the uh restaurant industry um it was kind of all i ever did and then somewhere in my early 20s i realized i was kind of good at it 
and then uh you know climb the ranks in local restaurants to where i live a little bit north of boston um you know got the earned the you title court on blue but not yet though okay. i i i had 10 years in the industry i actually earned the title of sous chef which is what num- that mean? number two sous means under you're under the boss so i was you know, and then I, I I got a catering chef. So I was the boss of a certain department, but then I was like, all right, I think this is what I am going to do because I don't know how to do anything else that's going to make yeah. money. So uh, I decided I should probably go get a degree. And that was after some, uh, this would be a, probably a different podcast, but after some horrible life decisions. Like brought me to some weird <laughs> places. We'll, 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 that's another place. Sure. The public does not know everything yet, but they okay. will eventually cool. once, once the book comes out. Whoa. <laughs> hard but, body uh, meals. Yeah, yeah. The hard truth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so decided, you know, go one way or the other. So I decided to go to school. I decided I needed that that thing, that piece of paper, that degree. So I went, I went and got a, you know, I didn't go for the certificate program. I went and got my associate's degree um, at Le Cordon Bleu. Where, where was the campus? Uh, it was up in Dover, New Hampshire. It's before they moved to Boston. So because there were- D has probably how many prank calls have you sent with Cordon Bleu over the years, dude? I was yeah, Lincoln Tech. Uh, I don't know if they're affiliated or not, but yeah, that used to be a pastime of ours. Was giving them a hard time, so I can relate any, to that. Any colleges that that advertise themselves on like public television, D has their numbers on speed dial. We had way too much time on our hands back in the day, but well, you know we pretty, move we move on. Pretty sure you're still doing it. I don't know about that. <laughs> okay, so, yeah. you, so you go to Dover, New Hampshire. You, you're up at La Cordon Bleu. And what is cooking school like? Like, you're not, like, taking, like, just tests. Like, are you no, just, it's, like, a, it's a lot more practical. There there was, so in the degree program, there is classroom. You do it, you did have to do your, you know, associate's degree, gen eds, and stuff like that. So uh, half practical, half, you know um in the classroom yeah 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 yeah. so there there was you know your your basics your math and your english but then there was like public speaking and stuff like that that was horrible i was scared to death um but i mean you know in the industry you need to talk to people you need to explain um even just little meetings at work but you know well that's changed for you now aren't you just like totally full you were you went salesman mode like somewhere down the line right i did i did but it was still in the food industry so, so I had you a, could pitch easily, right? You believed in your products. So you're like, all right, this is easy. I can sell what I believe in. So I mean, I bought from this company for many years, and then my sales rep became my friend, and then he asked me if I wanted a better quality of life and more money, and I was like, well, that's a stupid question. So of course, um, yeah. And I had 20 years in, and I was, you know, I was a chef in Boston, and something happened with the company I was working for, and a, an opportunity came to, you know, I already rewind head children and uh, a little family and he was like well do you ever want to see them he's like i can offer you a, a nine to five still in the restaurant industry probably making more money but that's your choice if you can sell but you're also not cooking though so what was that like kind of a drawback for you well so just to simplify things so you you're a chef for a really long time you're mm-hmm. a sous chef you get your degree and then you go back into the restaurants right? yeah yeah well i actually never left i you oh, know okay. i didn't have I was 25 years old when I went to school, so there was no mommy and daddy. I had to pay for that, and and it wasn't cheap. It was, you know, it's more now because that was quite a while ago. But um, so I was working full time as a sous chef in North Andover, Massachusetts. No, Andover, Massachusetts. While I was going to school in Dover, but uh, cooking school was sort of military ish. We'd start at like 5:45 in the morning, Whoa. and then be out you know, early afternoon and then fly down to mass and go jump in the kitchen for, you know, 10 hours. So you've always just been working like a psycho. Yeah. Yeah. I love it though. It's the only, you know, but now it's, you know, now it's different. Now it's more about like leading a team than like playing with the food as much, teaching people to do, you know, fun things with food while keeping it clean and everything else. So. Well, do you, do you still find joy in that though? Like being like an operations guy as opposed to actually being like the creative side of the restaurant? I do. I do. It's exciting to, to see people grow and, you know. And build a business is yeah. fast and fun, right? Yeah. Well, fast, fast, fast pace, but yeah. It yeah. takes time. It's a, it's a hustle, yeah. But to see people grow and learn and start to get excited about doing things that you do or that you showed them is, is cool. And then when they start seeing success, that's exciting. So whereabouts in Andover were you working at the time? You can have the coffee. Go ahead. 
Or is that... I'll get back to that. Uh, oh, it's I rice was... rocket fuel. It is, yourself. right? Uh, I believe the pl- it's a little Mediterranean restaurant now on a little dead-end road, post office road, right off of downtown. But it was a French bistro called Cassis Bistro. Whoa. So and it was, French it, it was cool. Then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually came full circle. To, I was to working for a guy. He opened this restaurant, but uh, he was... He was the chef at a restaurant I was working at previous to that, another North Andover location. We always find each other. How it's far weird... from Edgewood? You know Edgewood? Edgewood. It's this like a grand course? retirement home in North Andover. My grandparents used to live there. It's just like mm. assisted living. You know the Bertucci's there? I do. Yeah, it's, it's like right by the Bertucci's. Yeah. 125 and 114. Mm-hmm. Um, D, are you familiar with this area? Uh, I actually zoned out for a sec. We're talking Andover, right? North Andover. Yeah. North Andover. Well, he's very uh, good first it was Andover, then it was North Andover. Okay, let's see. Yeah, North Andover, you're up near the New Hampshire border. Like you said, you went to school in Dover. Uh, so that was a pretty easy commute, I would imagine. What's that, 30, 40 minutes, something like that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, yeah. D drives all over the state, or he has, so he's very familiar with certain interstates and highways. Okay. Yeah, yeah I guess you could say that. Um, yeah, but other than that, no, I, I haven't really spent a whole lot of time in North Andover. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't. It's a nice little town. It it is. It's an ing- it's a re- incredibly nice town. It's yeah, not yeah, it's not bad. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> so you're you're in the French restaurant. How have did you take any of that experience and have you brought it into hard body? Because it's like totally different now. It it the is. Cuisine. I I think I think that it's a big meshed up uh, cuisine at hard bodies. So you can't really. It's. It's a big mix. This this Spanish influence, Mexican, and this is all part of my past experiences. You know, this this French style cooking, which is technique, but then some of the dishes have a, you know, flavors of Mexico and Spain. It's just it's whatever we feel like doing. There's elaborate on know, what technique. Like, what do you mean? How you prepare the food? So, or? so I mean, yeah, I mean, well, every, every uh, European culture will say that they created this right the french say that they did the italians this but uh you know french technique will come down to the the cutting the 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 chopping style the this the knife cuts and the shapes and different things you do and uh what, so like cordon bleu so is french like cutting style. an onion what's a french cut uh like a thin strip is a julienne <laughs> it's cute <laughs> so yeah so, but are you a, doing juliennes right now with hard body yeah of course uh, you know, a julienne will then turn into a dice because you have to do that for you have to cut strips before you dice. And is a dice an American cut? I think that's an American okay. term. Okay, cool. But there are French terms for it. Which so one? a tiny little dice, like eighth of an inch by eighth of an inch, is a brunoise. A brunoise. Oh my god! <laughs> but it, it, this that will get very boring if we get further into that. But that's that's like the foundation, though. You know. But that that. Those would be terms that would be on your test at Le Cordon Bleu, right? Sure, sure. Something Written like and practical. Okay. Like you would have to cut and they would come over with a, a like something to measure. Like you would have to, it would have to be this length by this width. And if it were wrong, it gets scraped into the trash and you do it again. And see, that, that's your grade. See, that's wild to me. Like the type of precision that makes like a really high quality chef. Because mm-hmm. when I picture sh- chefs, so mind you, we had... Um, we ran an episode with Andy Husbands. Are you familiar with him? Yeah, of course. Yeah, he was up here two days ago. What? Yeah, it was pretty cool. But yeah, he, he's a Boston cat. He's yeah. got Tremont six four seven. The smoke shops are killing it. But I, I remember I th- him from. I think Tremont. He closed that down. Tremont's but, done. Yeah, I've been out of the city a little while. Yeah, you're up North Shore, right? <laughs> up, up in that area. Yeah, yeah. But um, the smoke shops are, are killer. Though. I remember when the first one opened in. I, I went to one in Seaport. Okay, there was one, and there's one in uh, assembly. at Assembly, but there was one. Where, where do you say it Cambridge was? Uh, Technology, not Technology. Kendall, Kendall yeah. Square. Well, that was yeah. the first one. That's right? still there. Yeah, sick. But he, uh, the one thing I learned from him, I learned a couple things from him. But he was like, I picture like a good chef and a good restaurant owner as someone who's like really feeds on chaos and able to multitask. But at the same time, what marks a really good individual in your industry is someone who like also has the ability to do all of it but when it comes time to like zone in on the specifics like you have to be able to do that organize chaos is that you feel the same way yeah 
yeah but you, yeah you have to be squared away like it's all it's like it's it's good chefs are almost like have like a military structure not to take anything away from the military but that's kind of how you're trained if you're trained by a good chef or you went to school it's you know it's it's from your from your uniform being clean squared away you know your fingernails OCD. cut like yeah yeah are you big ocd yeah yeah Major League. and you know if I, you bring it like you bring in a cook, somebody new, and they're 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 just a mess. Their knife cuts are a mess, and smeared all over the table. It's like the brain just exploded. You're getting like, stressed Whoa, out. Just clean it up. About it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you but, hire, are you looking for that? Like you see someone come through, you're like, yo, they better be exact and organized. And- I appreciate that, but I'm not. I'm not. I can teach that. I can't teach somebody to be a hustler. I can't. You know, you can't. You can't teach work ethic. If you if you come in. And you just want to kick ass. I can teach you how to Julienne and Brunois. Yeah, I can teach the skill, um, you know, because we need we need just I need people who are focused and want to come in and just be awesome and believe in what we're doing. You know what I mean? I yeah. can teach the details. I don't I don't want any chefs coming in to be honest until you until I'm further out of the picture and then then you know. But you'd rather just <clears> have <throat> someone who is going to just put in the work and build, help build the business. Yeah. Yeah, I feel yeah. Like. And you can sense that, right, from miles away. I mean, as I'm sure you've been hustling for a long time. Yeah. I'm starting to notice it myself. I can tell when someone's a like loves to work and is a psycho worker. Right. You feel that way? Right. Yeah. Sixth sense with it. Like someone walks in the door, you're like, damn, this guy really is crazy. Mm-hmm. He should join the hard bodies team. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so you are now working as a sous chef. You leave and then you get you're you hate your hours right your family's starting am i right so there was there was so much in between there's so many other places there's new reports i'm not trying to age you here city yeah 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 yeah. but um i mean you kind of always you know uh hate the i mean the the hours never change like it's it's always going to be like that i mean i never had any intention of leaving the kitchen and going to sales i i mean we we used to make fun of the sales guys (laughs) You know, you guys are just scrubs. Yeah, we're the ones actually putting in the yeah, work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but their their clothes were clean and they were home by five. You know, and they were making bank, cracking a yeah. beverage and yeah. and being with their families. Um, so you know, I had just I was working for a very uh, big name chef in Boston. Um, it was it was a dream of mine to work for him for years. I, I had the opportunity to run one of his restaurants, and then just stuff happened between. Uh, him and the the business partner of that particular location, and uh, they they did away with that one. So I could have you know gone out looking for another job or taken that offer in sales. And um, you know it was a, a, you know I had an opportunity to stay with that chef at another location, but start at a lower yeah. level and work my way back up. You know go down and pay and everything else. But uh, I wasn't single, no kids like able to do that Money i had to i it. had to i had to keep it moving um so i i very respectfully declined the offer at the other location um there was an opportunity coming a few months down the road but i didn't have that time to take the pay cut and you know which is interesting so. because it's like a it's a bind i feel like people who get into the culinary industry it's all about like passion like we love food and you kind of have to you have because there right? is no money like you're not going to get rich being a cook or sh- like, you know, only like the elite of the elite chefs, like get rich off this. You know what well, I mean? It's a, so it's a career of like definite longevity, right? Like you got, if you want to see something in this, you got to work it for a long you time. You have to be willing to shovel the shit. Like, can we swear on this podcast? Yeah, yeah, I, I try to keep it clean, but you know, uh, shit. <laughs> damn, but no, you have to be willing to, if you want to, you know, if you want to, you know, you want to grow and kill it. I mean, anybody can just, cook their life away and never be anybody but you know i mean i kind of envied like when i was i was in my mid-20s my upper 20s going over thing these young 20 somethings were coming in next to me with no responsibility in the world they didn't have to be anywhere report to anybody they didn't have to earn real money they could they could make minimum wage and just get the education piece so um you know that's that's what it's all about those, those guys are the ones but it's such a saturated market now, and that's kind of another reason why I moved towards where we are now. 
Okay, you know, so, you, so you get everybody to... wants to be a chef now and be on Food Network and all that other stuff. So well, yeah, that was another thing I was I was <laughs> asking Andy about it. I don't think I really enunciated myself well, but I was like at at a certain point, it's such a competitive market that like personal building like a prevalent personal brand is so important for a chef now. Mm-hmm. And that's would you agree? Like, oh yeah, you got to put a face to everything now. Yeah, Food Network made cooking and being a chef so popular that you know for a while there from 10 15 years ago up until recently every you know every not everybody but a a lot of young people wanted to be a chef it was cool they made it sexy but then they jumped in the industry and realized you're getting your ass kicked and you're making no money unless you were that guy unless you want hell's kitchen (laughs) yeah yeah this is utterly disgusting (laughs) it's gross you donkey (laughs) This tastes like my mother's piss. <laughs> so you you then shift into sales. Now you're selling food, right? To chefs. So it was an easy sell. Chef to selling to chefs. And then and are you at this point like, okay, dude, I've been dogging it. I want to be a successful chef for so long. Wait, sales is also really competitive and like mm-hmm. very rewarding and like commission based. Yeah. I could do this. Yeah, oh, yeah, well, yeah, it didn't take long to realize I was pretty good at it. I mean, the guy that grabbed me out of my kitchen, like I told you, he was a friend. He was my sales rep, uh, but he knew that, like, he's like, oh, this, this kid will sell. And, it, you know, he was my rep up in the North Shore where I was. He's like, I'm going to have this guy sell in Boston. You know, I, I knew um, a lot of the Boston chefs from spending time out here and whatnot. And uh, so, yeah, I came in, didn't take long. I, they gave me just Cambridge and Somerville at first. They didn't let me go over the bridge. What were uh, you selling specifically? Uh, produce, specialty foods, um, everything from, you know, just basic vegetables to fancy imported, you know. So what, uh, what marks a specialty food? Specialty food. Uh, specialty foods, foie gras. Is that French again? What's uh, foie gras? Uh, do you guys know? Is that some sort of vegetable? No, that is... No, <laughs> a, way, a way off there. <laughs> that, is, uh, that is not hard body meals. Uh, we'll Go. grab it. Go. I know, like, I know, like duck foie gras is like when yes. you cook it in its own fat. So, like, is there what's like the general foie gras, or I is think, it like I specifically? Think, duck? I think you're combining two things, and you're very, very close. So, so cooking in its own fat is confit, uh, that's duck confit. But oh, okay. they do that with duck. Duck foie gras is a fattened duck liver. Sounds delicious, right? But in the culinary world, and in those. You know, in high-end restaurants, I don't even know if it's as popular anymore because I've been out of that scene for a while. Like, I don't know if anybody even cares about it. And that's the other thing. Like, the high-end restaurants, there's nothing healthy about it. Everything was confit, cooked in its own fat, duck fat, bacon fat, pork fat. If you cooked with fat, if you were, like, uh, slow cooking something in fat, it's delicious, right? And it stops your heart. But that sounds like a cholesterol blast. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but yeah, so that's, I mean, we, we actually sold duck fat. We sold, you know, specialty, thing, you know, foie gras imported from here, there, truffles so that uh, must imported spe- from Europe. You must have been a specialty salesman as well. Like, not many people are actually selling that specific product in the area, right? So, I, there was, there is some competition, some guys, uh, you know, I don't need to mention any names. Other companies in from New York and here and there that would that would bring this fancy stuff in. But um, the difference with the company I was working for is they, they didn't hire salespeople. They hired chefs. So I could come in and try to get you to buy my stuff. But I could also tell you 10 things you could do with it. And I probably could tell you maybe better than what you were going to. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So we were chefs selling the chefs. And, we were, you know, I could tell you how and why to buy my stuff. And, you know. Okay. So... So, but so, that gave me time to start to focusing on where, where I'm going. Take it. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, I was going to say, so now you you got that restaurant experience on your belt, right? Like you've been chefing. And now, wait, I kind of understand how money works. And I understand how the se- sell- selling works. So I have that blend. So is this where hard body starts? or? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, coming up as a chef, you know, I think any driven chef, want, you know, nobody, ever, you don't want to work for somebody forever. You know, I was one to op- own my own restaurant. And, you know, I, I mean, for some, it's a pipe dream. It's never going to happen, but I was going to do it. I was gonna, I'm going to own a restaurant. Um, am I going to do it in the city where all the competition is or maybe take my, my skills back up to where I'm from and, you know, be a big fish in a small pond? But anyway, that was always the thing. But, um, you know, I was in sales for a few years. I ended up at this company 
I think like three and a half years that I, I did get used to that nice lifestyle and everything else. And, uh, I mean, I know what it takes to open a full service restaurant and all the unhealthy stuff that goes along with it from the, from the food itself, but also the, the lifestyle and you can either be part of it or not, but you know, it's there. Um, oh, you mean like drugs and like crazy stuff? Oh, like there's that. plenty. Of, yep. Yep. Drugs, sex, everything. I mean, is that real deal? Like it's just like, yeah. Really f- yeah. Just, yeah. Is, is it I be- mean, it's because people are just pushing themselves to the extreme all the time or sure. I mean, in the, you know, some of the more higher end restaurants I worked in, they would kind of, I feel like it might've been less, you know, open, but it was still going on. Like the, you know, the, the chef was still, you Rail know, and, Coke. F- and yeah. And then, and then taking the bartender home or, or even if they, if, if it was a wedding, probably out back with the bride, you know? So, I mean, it was <laughs> like, yeah, like it, it's, uh, I mean, you know, like I say, some of the nicer places I worked at, they would, they, they would honestly like act maybe more accordingly during shift than like some of the average restaurants yeah. they would you know stay squared away until the night was over but then it was like all right what's next where are we going we, it's, it's 11 12 1 in the morning uh the bar's got another hour to go connor's having an after party at his apartment it's gonna be dope it's gonna be you know girl's gonna be getting naked it's good is, is it just because people are, <clears throat> are wired or do you got something yeah just adding on to that i really got to see that this summer firsthand in alaska you know at the <laughs> resort i worked at we had um <clears throat> we had a restaurant on site and i <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> i got to know the executive chef pretty well and i knew a lot of the cooks and like <clears throat> i'm sorry like you were just saying they wouldn't get off work until you know 11 12 1 in the morning and a lot of the time they didn't have to go to work until four or five the next day so, you know, they had the uh, the luxury of being able to sleep in and they would go out and, you know, we had bars in the area that were open late and, you know, sometimes they'd stay after in the kitchen and drink there. And I think a lot of it is just, you know, you're around food and booze all the time. So that tempta- temptation, th- yeah, that temptation <laughs> to drink is always there, you have access especially, to. especially the bartender, you know, our bar closed at one, but oftentimes I saw it, you know, employees would go there and stay till two, three in the morning and our managers would look the other way. Our executive chef too, you know, I saw him out and about all the time and he was always drinking, you know, and it's funny. Stop the next snitching. <laughs> this guy's going to lose his job. <laughs> it's all right. I don't think he'll be listening to this, but yeah. And then, you know, I'd see him the next day and he always had a very, you know, he was always very professional, always ready to go, but it definitely seemed like a, like an interesting environment to be in. Definitely. It's that work hard, play hard. So true. It does wear on you. Like you could do that for years. And if you, you know, if you're a hustler, you could do it and you get up and you do it again the next day. But, uh, you're it does take man. years off. Like Dude, you miss it, it a little bit. No, definitely don't miss it, but it was fun. I mean, no regrets. It brought me to where I am today mm-hmm. through those dark things that we're going to get to another okay, time. Right. But, but you know, hard but we, yeah, we, yeah, we, you know, either you find your way out or you, or you don't. So, so then you start up hard body, right? Yeah. So, so, and this is as you're a salesman, you're starting the company or you're just like, I'm leaving the sales job, going to start hard body. So I was always into fitness and, and I always played sports. I was a hockey player growing up and everything all through high school. Um, could have played college, but there's some of the, some of the doc stories, um, for another time. Sound washed up. Sound washed up. (laughs) But uh but was always into fitness. Love love, you know, being in shit. But in the restaurant when I was when I was working fourteen hours I wasn't um getting out of work and going to the gym. It was kind of like what we were just talking about. But when I got into sales and I was working nine to five and you know what, if I didn't if I didn't want to work until five, I didn't have to. If I if I earned a ton of sales and money you know, I could bang out at noon, but then I, I I started making it a priority to get to the gym. Uh, my inside counterparts at this company knew don't call me after four. If you call, I was probably like on the bench. I was lifting weights, like to, you know, like power lifting for the most no, part. Or? No, no, um, just classic bodybuilding movements. Cool. I'm I, I'm not a power lifter. <laughs> you're not a Mike. You're not a Mike Rosa. <laughs> no, 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 he's a beast. That's my dude. Uh, but no, but but just you know, like I, it started becoming a priority. So then, like when you do that, all your other habits change. Just you know started to you know drink less after a while and then started eating you know food you more, know more disciplined yeah that i you know like i always knew how to eat right i mean it, there was a nutrition class in the cordon blue like i always knew the right way but you know the in you know high-end restaurants healthy food wasn't that fun so anyway my life started to change into that and and then you know 
I did concept a full service sort of high end restaurant halfway through my sales uh, life and, um, and took it all the way to the end, had a lease in hand for a beautiful spot. Uh, one of those newly renovated, you know, mill buildings in Haver where I live and we're going to do a cool restaurant. I had an investor, my brother, um, he was also the builder. So he's going to, you know, but, um, anyway, for, probably for good reason that that didn't go through on uh, right before signing the lease. So, um, so then I started thinking about what's next and, and, you know, kept going with my, my own health and fitness. And then, uh, I started noticing these meal prep companies. I didn't know what meal prep was. I just prepped my own, I was a chef and I don't know what the hell meal prep, you just cook your food. And I saw meal prep companies, but they all looked like they were like gym guys that were grilling chicken, shitty dry stuff for their buddies, right? Meal prep. And I'm like, I could do that, but I could make it taste good. And you know, and not sell frozen meals packaged and shipped across the country. And I'm like, that's interesting. And, and then, you know, seed was planted. And then, and then uh, you know, it didn't take long. And I wrote a business plan. And, and then the name just, like, fell out of my mouth one day. I was like... Hard body. Hard body. Hard body meals. And then I Googled it. I'm like, Is it, does anybody have that name? <laughs> and, I, and, and it wasn't out there. Nobody, nobody had it. I was like, cool. And so, like, Let's get that trademarked. Yeah, it, which I haven't done yet. If anybody steals that, I, I'll choke you. But I would do it literally today, tomorrow, okay. today, yesterday. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So then, um, I mean, but I didn't, you know, I didn't have a, you know, I was a chef, a salesperson, whatever. But I still didn't like have this huge bank account behind me or any investors or, or mommy and daddy like loaded with money to like invest in their boy, you know. So I'm like, how the hell am I going to do this? So, um. I just started looking around like, where could I go? How could I do this? Like, how can I just prep meals for people that, you know, that are trying to, you know, change what they're doing and eat healthy. And I'm like, oh, I have the chef name. People trust that I can cook. So anyway, long story short, I, I found a place that I could start cooking meals for just a portion of their rent and using their kitchen in off hours. No and, way. Uh, it, it, yeah. So I didn't buy a restaurant. I didn't, you know, I didn't. You found a kitchen. I found a kitchen and I, where is this in Haverhill? It was in Haverhill. It's a little breakfast place. And he only used his kitchen until two in the afternoon. And then it sat until the next morning. I was like, dude, home run. I was like, I kind of like the back of this warehouse. Sick. Yeah, exactly. This is sick. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, he was excited to save half. Cause I told him I'd give him half. I'm like, what do you pay? I'm like, I'll give you half, but I got to start paying next month after I earn my first few sales. You know, I'll pay for this month at the, you know. And this was just like some diner breakfast joint. Yeah, a little spot. And I was like, I need a little bit of storage. And I need, you know, he's like, yeah, great. Half my rent. And so that lasted two weeks. And then we, like, we just started taking over his kitchen. And he was like, oh, man, I think you guys got to go. <laughs> so, like, shit, we like, it, it did take, you know, we, we set up an Instagram page. And, uh, you know. And what are you cooking when you start? And who are you giving it to? So... I mean, local, you know, local athletes. It was just like, you know, lo just local people. I mean, we started, Insta we started on Instagram and just like telling people. So, you know, we realized we had to at least reach from where we were in Haverhill, at least to the city, at least to Boston. So we were like, hey, Boston area meal prep company will deliver all over. <laughs> so, so it was myself and a friend of mine. And he, you know, he was like, he set up the social media and you know he he was gonna drive the food around and i was cooking the food and we set up a little schedule and you had to email your orders to us we didn't have a website we just had social media and and you could email so you just order. like threw it at the wall let's see if this it, works threw it at a wall i wrote a menu you know i and i did understand how to cook clean and not add fats and sugars mm -hmm. and stuff but this has all evolved we've been in business two and a half years now um so then we, we learned that you could build a website for short money, like yourself with mm -hmm. no coding and, and, you know, we didn't know how to do that stuff. Yeah. So we built a little website and then I was like, and we intertwined that with a card processing, credit card processing thing. And so what did you get a new spot after that? So, I mean, we started looking right around that downtown strip in Haver where we are. I'm like, somebody else has got to let us do this with a bigger kitchen. I mean, these guys know me. I'm from here. They know that, uh, they know that I'm a good chef and I'm going to take care of their place. And I've been here and been on this TV show and this, you know, nobody want like nobody wanted to give up half their kitchen. Mm -hmm. Nobody had that sweet deal. Like they, you know, they had done it too. 
I would never want anybody in my kit. We've, I've actually since had people come and ask me and I've, I've tried to like give back and like come it's up with a though, way yeah. to let them just because somebody did that for me. Um, so, so it, we outgrew it in two weeks, but we, we had, we dragged it out and we stayed there for two months and then we found a, something fell in my lap one of a good friend of mine that i came up in the restaurant industry said hey i'm opening this new restaurant up in hampstead new hampshire you should come check it out i'm like well i don't really have a reason to check it out i, I started a business and then i went up there and then I, he introduced me to the chef and the chef was like he told him that i cook he's like you want a job and i was like well uh, no i i'm not looking for a job he's like yeah but kevin says you're a chef He's like, is your French dude? <laughs> no, 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 Colombian dude, awesome guy. But uh, so he's trying to get me to come open this restaurant with him, and I'm like, yeah, no. I was like, how about this? I was like, let me use your brand new, beautiful, this brand new, brand new equipment, newly renovated space. They had just finished building it, but they weren't open. They had months still to go to get things developed. I said, why don't you do this? Let me use your beautiful brand new kitchen to prep my meals and run my little business, and I'll help you in my extra time open your restaurant yeah and i was joking i was like i was joking with the guy. he's not gonna go for the, who would go for and he's not the owner he can't make that decision he goes done we make it happen and i was like yeah, okay go ask your boss we'll see so then you just move up there and operation so, starts yeah the he he went to the boss uh my friend kevin told them who i was where i came from they did a little research you know stocked online and this and that and um they they're like yeah we'll take this guy and uh so that one lasted a little longer, like closer to a year. Um, I mean, we outgrew our space there in like six months. But, you know, we were supposed to go there in the middle of the night. Yeah. And we were supposed to be done by the time they started cooking lunch. And you were lunch. there all day, right? Not, not in the beginning. So, so we would, then I would change my uniform and, and then I would work their restaurant and I was, I helped the chef and, you know, I was like his, his right hand man. And, you know, so as I was trying to grow my business, I was opening their new restaurant with them and we opened and it was successful. And we did, you know, we, I mean, I was doing hard body during the day and I was doing wine dinners at night. Like it was, it was ridiculous. Whoa, that's that hustle. Yeah, bro. So eventually so, they got tired of us. <laughs> well, real quick. So can you explain, so people can understand, can you explain the hard body, the business model, how it works and like what your company actually does? So as I said, we're a you know performance based meal prep company. So we we prep food for for everybody. So you know I mean unfortunately hard body meals and there's barbells in the logo. People think it's only for bodybuilders, weightlifters, but it's 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 clean, well balanced you know meals that uh, just just for anybody that uh, wants to eat healthy, better themselves, doesn't have the time to cook, doesn't know how to cook. Or just couldn't be bothered, right? Um, oh, sorry to go cut ahead. you off. No, no, please. So can you explain what, like, the process? So you, people want their meals prepared, right? Yeah. You guys cook the food in your kitchen. I'm yeah. assuming you have a new kitchen. for. Yep, now we have our own space nice. that we've been in for a year and a half now. It, oh, well, I, I like to round up. We're yeah. almost at a year and a half in our own space. We took over a, a, a good size old uh, Greek restaurant. Yeah. pizza place type of place so, so you guys have your headquarters <clears throat> and you guys prepare food the me the menu varies and then people order online what they want for the week sure so <clears throat> so yes so so now we actually have a restaurant of our own to back that up um so you can actually come in and sit down and order from pretty much the same menu and sit down and eat it. you can call ahead for takeout but meal prep is is what we do so um, you can actually get it twice a week. So we don't, we don't do anything frozen. Uh, everything's fresh. So it's, you know, it's good in the fridge for four days. So they go online, they can order and either pick it up or have it delivered on Sunday. And then they can do it again Wednesday if they want. So that, so they keep it fresh. They can get everything on Sunday and put half in the freezer if they want, but we give the opportunity to keep it fresh. And that's how we separate ourselves from the other guys sending frozen stuff 600 miles across the country. So let's say Danny is like, dude, I do not want to go out. I don't want to make my own food this week. I don't want to cook my own food. I don't want to go buy food. I just want the hard body meals prep. How does the process work? So <clears throat> on Friday, by midnight or anytime, 
you know, he's got to get an order in on Friday or before. He can order early. He can order a month in advance if you want. Just choose the date you want. But go online, pick and choose. He can build his own meals from, you know, he can use our custom meal builder and he can choose a protein and then pick a portion, anything from four ounces all the way up to 12, depending on what you're trying to do with yourself. Uh, then also you can pick your carb and your vegetable. Or you can go no carb. And that's the custom meal builder. If you, you have an idea of how to build your meals, you can do that. Um, or you can go on our uh, a la carte section, a little Whoa. French term. Uh, what was and it called can, a bourgeoisie? What was it? <laughs> what was it in the cut? Uh, uh, I don't know. That sounded like some sort of porn thing. Yeah. I, don't know, but <laughs> I think, what is the bourgeoisie? Brunois. <laughs> oh, Brunois. <laughs> but what was the bourgeoisie? Do you know what that is? <laughs> It was, yeah, it was like the bourgeoisie was some French rebellion gang. Something. Ah, oh, okay, okay. Merci. Yeah, I think you're on the right track. Something like that. <laughs> okay. So, so then there's another section with meals that are, are a little more chef inspired. That a la carte. So, you know, so those dishes that are already built for you. They might be different sizes, but it's it's a composed dish where you can just go hit the easy button and and grab a bunch of meals that way. Um, then we have. Uh, uh, the buy the pound section. So every protein, carb, and veg that we sell, you could buy by the pound. We do have some guys that just eat that pound of meat in one sitting. The carnivore are some diet. of our crazy bodybuilder yeah. animals. Uh, but then also the people that are uh, training to step on stage for bodybuilding competitions and they're measuring their food to the gram. Um, so that, you know, so they're doing that stuff themselves. Um, so, but D orders, right? Yeah. And so he's like, okay. Honestly, I don't want to customize my meal. You guys already have pre-built meals for the week, right? Like I saw you had like the meal packs. Yeah, the meal packs. Yeah, so he can, you know, and that's like the, the true easy button. So if you go to the meal packs section, um, and we will be upgrading this even further soon. It's it's, it's a process, Evolving, right? Yeah. So right so right now you can get it at increments of five. So you can get five, 10, 15, 20, or 25 meals. And they're actually a little discount, you know, at each level you go up, takes a little more percentage off. But... Uh, you can either hit one of those increments and then hit a random button and it'll just fill your bag. You know, it'll give you some breakfast, you know, protein pancakes, uh, some entrees, and it'll just mix it up. Or you can leave them open and pick and choose and do it yourself. But you can you can just fill your bag with 5, 10, 15, up to 25 meals and go without even thinking about it. Um, so how have you marketed to someone like, so I'm like, intermediate fitness i'm not like a mike rosa but i like work out like five times a week right that's more than i do good for you <laughs> well, you, well, you're, you're running a kitchen man you're full time but for instance i'm not going to be as totally actually this is honestly i'm a bad case because i'm actually really anal about my diet but let's say someone's just getting into lifting how do you market to them as opposed to being totally specific like this is your macros, this is your protein, this is your carbs, this is your fats. That's a good question. So, <clears throat> so we are not uh, nutritionists or dietitians, um, but we—that's a new feature that we are like very, very close to adding to our online store. So right now, you just buy the food from us. We will suggest, you know, if you're just trying to eat clean, you can literally buy anything off the menu because it's all built in a way that, you know, we avoid all the things you're not supposed to have, you know, you, or you should keep out of your diet sugars and added fats and refined sugars. Right? Exactly. So, um, so as of now, you know, we'll make suggestions if you're trying to lose weight, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll show you how to get, you know, sort of low carb options. And we do have a keto section of the menu for people that are into the keto thing. Yeah. I want to get touch on that in a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Again, um, you know, not dietitians. I understand the, uh, how to build the premise a keto the meal, you know, yeah. you know, keep the carbs low and the pro moderate proteins and all High that fat, stuff, yeah. the healthy fats. Um, but we are adding a, uh, fitness um piece and a nutrition piece to the website soon where we, we we do have some people on board but just waiting on deck that are uh you know certified dietitians and nutritionists that will actually be able to sell diet plans to people um but uh we would right now we're just kind of on a referral thing so we have a lot of athletes and stuff and and nutritionists and and fitness trainers you know mike rosa and yeah and, i can uh, see why why Chris people Pantano, in that so. space would want <clears throat> It's, it's easier to market because you guys are totally specific about the calories. Yeah. Like I was like going through the menu. It's like 381 calories. Like how do you, how do you measure that? 
So <clears throat> I, I guess I just, we just start by, you know, um, building the proteins and the carbs and the vegetables. And, and when you push, when you're portioning that stuff to it, you know, to a certain model, you know, the calories fall into place. So, you know, some people start the opposite way and, and, and again, not a dietitian, nutritionist that somebody's probably rolling over going, what is he talking about? But, um, you know, as far as goals and stuff, we might, we'll base it on your, your body weight or your goal body weight and, and, you know, what? grams of protein per and all that stuff. Sorry, I mean like it's all of your products list the calories. Okay, for people that are counting. Yeah, so how do you guys count that in the kitchen? Is it just like, oh, we have a piece of chicken. We know it's like roughly 100 calories. We know that the sauce is like roughly 50 that, calories. Yeah, no, there's there's no roughly. So <clears throat> so um, our website actually has on a custom built section, it has, uh, you know, the macros built in for every ingredient on it, you know, every protein, every carb. So you guys add it up. Your yeah. Own. So on that one, you know, the info is in there and as you build your plate, it's calculating that for you. And then on the plates that we already have put together, we've, we've done the work using, you know, actual information and we've built it in based on the portioning so that anybody, you know, that is counting, they can go on if they order a chicken burrito bowl, they, you know, the numbers are there, the calories, the proteins, carbs, fats, um, fibers. And, you know, if they're counting their stuff on a daily, weekly basis, it, the information's in there. So when you get that, when you say the, we've already gotten the information, so you have some sort of database where you're like, okay, I know that this chicken from this farm in Idaho, I know that this slice is going to be a hundred calories, right? Sure. So exactly. what yeah. is that? Where do you get that info from? Oh, let's plug in another business. Okay. No, I use, I, I, uh, I've grown to trust uh, calorieking.com. Okay. A lot of people use fitness pal, uh, but I could go in and put an ingredient in fitness pal and you, and I could put false information about the, the calories or proteins in that. So, uh, just by referrals from mm -hmm. a lot of the dietitians we work with, that's where I, I go to, to get my, you know, my, the macro information yeah, I'm just, per ingredients. I'm just wondering where people like actually get the science. Like for instance, I'm on like a, if I'm eating at maintenance, cause I'm pretty active, I'll probably mm -hmm. burn about like 2,900 calories a day. Sure. And so like I track most of my calories. Yeah. So I'm wondering like, well, what if this gala apple I'm eating isn't, is actually 120 calories and it's not 80. Like who's the one to judge that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's a weird thing because we've cross-referenced the FDA website versus calorieking.com versus the label on the bag of jasmine rice. And I tell you, like it's 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 kind of a scary thing, but there's been three different numbers. Are they close though? They are close, but it's you know, I I think, you know, at that point I think it's kind of splitting hairs like it's yeah i don't i don't i mean i not every I, food I, is the same exactly. yeah yeah i mean i don't know who wins in that but mm -hmm. that's you know we'll when it gets that close you know i'll i'll just round them yeah i'm gonna go with those three places and divided by three <laughs> <laughs> take an average yeah, well, i don't think you can get any more specific than that yeah so okay real quick so d's online he orders the food sure and you guys cook it in your kitchen, cook it on Friday cool night, it, package it. No, so it goes out on Sunday. So he has to order by Friday to give me the opportunity to, to source the food fresh. Again, it has to sit in your fridge for four days. And that's my company on the line. So I don't want anybody dying mm -hmm. or getting sick. So, you know, we've all eaten leftovers that are seven days old and we've been fine. And, and most likely my food will last that long, but I give you four days. Um, so he, so order comes, he places the order on Friday by midnight. That gives me time to source the product. Um, you know, by now we know how much stuff we need in house, but you know, things spike from week to week from, from, you know, from Sunday to Wednesday so to fulfillment days. So he orders. Um, so then, you know, Saturday we go into the kitchen and we start prepping, um, uh, fully cooking all the food, then properly cooling everything. What, and is, then, what is a proper cooling? Uh, cooling down to basically refrigerated temperature. There's a process, cool. you know, you know, you bring it down to a certain temperature, uh, you know, and then it goes into a fridge to go down even lower, um, you know, and then, then it gets packaged, labeled, bagged to go either deliver right to his door or he can pick it up at our restaurant. So, and so, and so who's delivering you guys got your own trucks or. 
Uh, we ha- yeah, we have a, a handful of our own drivers for now. You know, um, we're, we, we're not uh, doing any shipping, any large shipping. The, our goals for growth are much different than that. We, we want a hard body in every major city. Mm-hmm. You know, we want everything to be kept fresh. We don't ever want to go to freezing and shipping or dry ice or any of that stuff. I was going to say, I and mean, we were talking about this a little bit beforehand, like it's uh, everyone wants their food fresh. But when mm-hmm. it comes to if you were to scale this on a global level, it's like, OK, then you're going to have to open up a kitchen at pretty much everywhere. Right. 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 Yeah. So you either have to water down your quality. And I've had I don't think I can speak negatively about my competition. So I have had uh, <laughs> I've had competitors, bodybuilders in the area, uh, professional and amateur. Uh, leave the big, big name companies in my industry um, to come to us because of because of a quality and freshness. Yes, focus um, on the product. Yeah, they they trust us. You know, there's there's no food that's going to be like lukewarm room temperature showing up at your door. Um, we do require somebody to be home. If you're not going to be home, you better have like a legitimate Yeti out there waiting for no, like an I, uh, an ice down yeah, cooler. cooler. Um, that will fit your meals, you know, and people get frustrated with that, but like, that's, you know, that's, that's what we do Whether you know, we're the quality guys. So it's quality service, then price. So we're not the cheap guys either. Um, if you're you're looking for for, for cheap meals, there are companies out there. I think that's in the name cheap meals or cheap eats. No, I'm just kidding. You're pissed. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. I have, uh, we actually have our meals in every supplement store in this area now, which is kind of exciting. We, you know, those, those guys are like GNCs. Hey, no, not, no, no, those guys wouldn't be, couldn't be bothered. I mean, the ones that people actually go to like a whole foods, um, no, like a- no supplement store. So, so we get, we get, uh, you know, the flex appeals, the American nutrition center, um, even way out in Western mass, we got a guy, uh, who's killing it out there. Uh, absolute nutrition. Whoa. Um, we got the guys down at Cape Cod Nutrition Corner. They're all they're all coming on board and they're selling our meals right next to the those other guys that I'm talking retailers. about. And my meals are going to be two, three, you know, a few dollars more. And and I have no problem with that. Mine are flying off the shelves because it's just different. You know, Big Fresh, you got a question? Hey, sorry to keep you guys in the dark. We've been locked in here a little bit. No worries. Um, so say you're brainstorming for like a new dish or like a recipe um what comes first is it making the food taste great and then taking out the sort of unhealthy bits or are you trying to um come up with something that'll hit all the uh, macro points and then kind of add in some flavor to it i think you just said the exact order so the so it's you know we Fuck yeah shit. dude so big fresh be <clears throat> killing the question so we are chef driven like all you know myself my my brother just joined the company who's who's the the next best chef that i know um this is not the construction brother no there's three of us it's it's scary um and you know all the guys in the kitchen we're all we're all from the restaurant industry we're not from the fitness so the first thing that comes into play is like you know cool color, like the dish you know the the creativity, and then it's like, all right. So when I created our protein pancakes, like I, I looked at a a basic pancake recipe, and I was like, all right. Well, we can't have gluten because every nobody has gluten anymore, right? So we got to we got to take the gluten out. We got to take you can't put butter in it. We're not going to put canola oil, uh, and all the you know and sugar, all the delicious things that go into pancake batter. So we found a a really really you know beautiful gluten-free dry mix uh we smash fresh bananas into it for the flavor but also for the sweetness uh we do use a bit of honey um you know uh and here's a piece of cardboard it, it, <laughs> try them best selling protein pancakes we'll plug that Is but uh but but create the dish first to answer your question create the dish then find you know the way to make it hard body right mm-hmm. and and then and then market it test it out you know, try it out. Have what, our, what makes it protein? Like you put a whey protein in it or that goes into the dry mix. Yeah. Okay. So, and we don't serve sugary, delicious maple syrup with it. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, you, you can, you know, we do have people that'll go for like one of those sugar free maples with it or, or whatever. We, we actually make, you guys have seen all those like protein nut spreads that are out there. I was buying those. Uh, and then I was like, wait a minute, we can make that. So we, we make a, uh, protein, peanut butter that we so so, it's, so banana pancakes with 
pro, uh, protein peanut butter, and it's a dark chocolate coconut vanilla protein peanut butter. It's ridiculous. Sounds amazing. I actually sell that by the half pound because people are like, can I just buy the peanut butter? So, and that also, that goes in our protein shakes at the mm-hmm. restaurant and whatnot. But, um, but yeah, so there's protein in the pancake uh, and then protein peanut butter on the side, which is natural peanut butter whipped with more protein. Peanut butter has its own, you know, so. That's your question? Yeah. yeah. D- Danny, you got one or? If you don't have one, it's okay. <laughs> Nothing at the moment, okay. but uh, I will comment on something. I think it's really cool how uh, kind of the basis of your company is, you know, you pride yourselves on the quality, whereas, you know, I see all these TV commercials for, you know, the Weight Watchers and the Jenny mm-hmm. Craig, and, you know, they're not really kind of priding themselves on that. And I think that's really cool. And that's what it seems like. That's kind of what separates you guys from everybody else. So I think that's, yeah. you know, I think that's what pretty, I, pretty what, effective. Yeah. What I also think is really dope is like people get worried if they don't know where their food's coming from. If yeah, knowing your kitchen, it's like, okay, I know exactly where they're cooking this thing. And like, I know the guy who's running it, which is fire. So your menu, you change it weekly. We change it when we feel like it, mm-hmm. or when we when we start hearing from our our clientele, like, "Hey, you guys, got anything new coming down the line?" Because we stick with the core menu. Like, you, you, we're a meal prep company. You have to have grilled chicken three hundred sixty five days a year with you have basil, to, broccoli. You know, mm-hmm. so <clears throat> so we keep you know the basics. You have to have chicken, rice, and broccoli, right? Because because our bodybuilders steak, eat that right? six times a day. Steak, our steak is is killer, and we. we you know, check our uh, our influences and our bodybuilders. Just ask them. We we do have we have the best steak in 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 all of the meal prep industry. And so I found a, a cut of beef. I'm not telling you guys on here. No, it's got the same uh, nutrient you know numbers as like beef tenderloin, filet mignon. So it it eats like filet mignon. It uh, it's got the low fat content. It's lean. You know, I I have guys that have eaten my steak all the way up to the Olympia stage. Uh, Big A B, Abner Logan. Uh, I don't, you know I'm, what I'm, I'm a little tucked out of the bodybuilder world. That's that's all right. My my dude just stepped on the Olympia stage Let's this go. week. Yeah, man, classic. And you've been like, feeding that guy, feeding that monster, right? Uh, came from the NFL. You created a monster. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He uh, from went from NFL to pro bodybuilding and you know pro cards. So anyway, the steak, the menu, um, the menu, right? So so the steak. These guys can eat it right. You know per their coaches right up to stage because it's you know it's it's lean it fits the program and uh but it's delicious like it eats like filet mignon like like butter but um yeah so well so are you constantly changing the menu or it's just like every two three weeks we, we kind of feel like so we, we change a, something new we change there? a lot of the vegetable like the vegetables seasonally but the uh the dishes themselves when we when we create a new dish it's and it's hard to because because you people hate you either way like if you if you don't take the dishes away or if, you know so we'll look at the sales and we'll, we'll replace something with something new right we have a couple of new dishes on the way and we're like we're, we're at a we're having an issue of like right, my notes real quick you can keep going like which one do we take away um but yeah you know i i would say i would say seasonally i don't think we don't do anything weekly or monthly but uh you know at at best we do it seasonally or if we just decide we want to create something new we just we just do it if people, you know, we do take, you know, uh, some of our regulars will ask us for something if we can, if we can do it, we will, if we, you know, if we don't think it works, you know, we don't, but. Okay. Hey, this is going to be Sammy Spiel. I mean, Abu, you'll probably be cutting these up. So this is going to be for the content question. You ready? So on your menu, I looked online. It said, I have, we serve a keto burger, right? Yes, it's sir. a grilled Angus burger topped with jalapeno cheese, a sunny egg, local bacon served over. Have you noticed there is a niche as a meal prep company to serve food based on popular diets? Absolutely. Like I, you know, I was late to the party with the keto. Well, thing. I mean keto, paleo, intermittent fasting, veganism. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, like I fought the keto thing for a while because I I hadn't done the diet I had no reason to do it just based on my own you know personal goals and whatnot but it was like we're getting pushed do you have keto and I was like well if you go on the custom meal builder and you build your meal like this you can make it keto and they're like no nah. do you have keto and I was like damn so so then I was like all right well we have to write a keto menu so we we just uh, I was like all right so let's just cover the bases so I did a breakfast uh, a, a a meat, a burger, 
a chicken and a fish. So we have a keto salmon dish. Like, I mean, salmon, that's, you know, that's healthy fat right there, right? So, so salmon, vegetables, avocado, right? And we'll, we'll tweak that a little bit. Salmon, vegetables, avocado, olive oil, right? You know, and then we have, and then the burger, and then we have the, the chicken dish with almonds and green beans and, um, and then the breakfast, eggs, bacon, avocado. Like, and so moving forward you think <clears throat> in making sure you guys build as the industry shifts, will you always just kind of be tapped into what diets are popular and then create meals for that? Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean that that's, you know, that's the plan. I mean, we, we want to listen to what everybody wants. I mean, you know, from, from the chef world that, you know, you're always doing what you wanted to do and try, you know, chefs are stubborn, right? Mm-hmm. But you know, doing what, what we're doing now in the, in the health and fitness industry, we we're, we're listening, you know, what, what's making sense, what's working for people, you know, yes, fad diets and all that stuff. Well, yeah, but we, what if you, what if a diet's just full of shit? You know what I'm saying? I want to say so many things, but, uh, yeah. but I, I don't want to offend anybody that we work with. Um, diets full of shit. I, I have my thoughts on that. Yeah. Um, but again, I'm going to just, I'm going to, if we can make it happen, I'm going to try to provide what our, you know, what our clients are looking for. Um, you know, when, when we have, when we go to the point where we have dietitians and nutritionists on the team, uh, full time, um, I might make those decisions when, if they're, if they're telling me, dude, don't give anybody that. You know, they, mm-hmm. they're going to die in 20 years. Like some of these diets we were just speaking about I, that we, we don't know. They haven't been around. Well, like for instance, the carnivore diet, are you guys familiar? It's like pretty self-explanatory. Right. Ju- eat ju- just all to eat all meat. meat. Yeah. yeah. And honestly, it sounds kind of fun. It does. You know what? I, I, I have a, a close friend, firefighter buddy that his, uh, his wife says he has, I forget what she calls it. His, his diet changes weekly. <laughs> it's, it's like today I'm on the all meat and the next week he comes in, I'm doing keto. And then he comes in and says he's doing, you know, Paleo. whatever. But yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but, but yeah, he was one of the first people to come in and say, yeah, I'm doing the all meat diet. Do you know about that one? And I was like, yeah, yeah, of course. Dude. So of course your so, heart's going to explode. It, yeah. In the, in the restaurant. I mean, it, you know, it's easier. People can come in and I can just make what they want right there. Or, you know, my, my cooks and chefs can, um, if they want to, if they want to do that, you know, they can order my buy the pound menu and just order a pound of meat and go nuts. Like have at it. Um, cause again, you know, we're not, we're not telling people what to buy and what not to buy, but we do try to stay ahead of the, you know, or stay in line with these, these diets and things, be able to supply what they need. Okay. Got like w- one more question before I ask my final question. You guys got anything? Hey, you having fun? Yeah, dude. Did you a good time? Yeah. I- probably talking too much so i guess just <laughs> touching on the diets do you think the main problem with those diets you know we're you, you guys were just talking about that is that uh the lack of variety in those diets you know you have the all meat the keto and i feel like those really limit the variety of foods that you can eat whereas what you offer you know you really do get a variety do you think that's kind of the main problem with those specific diets i i sometimes wonder if the main problem is the lack of research or, or, or how long, like how long has, has this diet been around for? And I know some of them go back hundreds of years and then there's the ones that are, you know, you know, only a couple of years old. Um, yeah, I mean, they are, they are limiting, but, um, but you know, we, we make it so there's something for everybody. So if you're doing keto and you're doing paleo and you're doing carnivore, we, we, we got you. Um, Heck I, yeah. I answered your question. Though. Yeah, no, you did. <laughs> well, I do. You, you got it. I, have you done paleo? I'm, my diet's pretty much paleo for the most part, except sometimes I'll eat beans. Legumes aren't technically paleo. I haven't actually necessarily seen people market things like paleo as distinctly as they'll market something like keto because keto is more restrictive. But like you could make a paleo bowl saying like, hey, here's chicken and broccoli and here's a fried egg. Right. And you're staying away from and, and you. But what I'm saying is like if you offered a paleo bowl, dude, I'd buy it. I, it's not the first time I've heard that. And I've actually gone up against with, uh, a lot of our CrossFit crowd and they oh, seem to be, we were friends until you said that we cater to everybody, man. I no, mean, I, I'm not sure. I, I really like the CrossFit community. I'm not it, even joking. And, and that's what they have community, like community. Like that's what they're all about. Right. But, uh, I've gone up against the, the paleo companies, you know, that because they'll come in these big monsters of, of meal prep with uh very, quality product 
Um, dude, you can hate your competition. Yeah, dude. Okay. I, I, yeah. I mean, nobody does what we do. Nobody will ever do what we do, but, um, you know, they'll come in and they'll just sponsor the whole, you know, CrossFit yeah. gym and, you know, it, it, that, you know, that's crippling, but like that's happened at more than one CrossFit and they'll like, Oh dude, they just came in and gave all the coaches free meals and a huge discount for all the members. Like, sorry, dude. And then like two weeks or two months down the road, they're like, Scotty, can we, can we try this again? The food's garbage. Yeah. Nice. But that tells me that I do maybe need to offer, uh, you know, open up like a paleo menu. You know, it will just be easy. It's like, hey, I'm on a paleo diet. Okay, cool. No one's really offering it. Hard bodies offers it. Cool. Right, right. So it it needs to be a section just like the keto, you know, because yeah. again, I'm still go to my uh, custom meal builder and you can build and yeah. you can, but, you know, they, so that that section will be on the way. Um, I mean, there's, there's no limit to, what we're doing final final question so we might cut this as content too you let me know you got a better sense than me i know you gotta get out of here soon so that's why i'm trying to wrap it up so listen there there is a bunch of individuals out there and we kind of asked this in the 80 husbands episode so let me start over so it's a good clip there are a lot of individuals who want to be successful in the restaurant industry it's it's glamour. It's glamorous. Like run a cool restaurant, be a cool chef, be a, on the business end of a successful high end restaurant. What's like one characteristic you've noticed for people f- for success in the restaurant and food industry that you have to have? You have to have the business sense. Just because you're a chef and you can make a des- nice dish does not mean that you can run a business. Does not mean you have a clue. On, on on the the important aspect the numbers that you know keeping everything in line uh leading a team um you know being in business it's it's got it's you got to have all of that you have to have a level head you got to be squared away that whole that whole military thing but um but uh you know you you, you have to have it all you know and and be able to you know multitask the the business the the quality and and the leadership keep it business I love it. All right, listen, we got to end this. But hey, I had a great time. This is how we start and end the episode. You ready? You got to say hi. I'm Scott. Oop. And this is my, I'm Scott, I'd say, from Hard Body Meals. We're actually going to call this Hard Body Meals Golden Hour. Is that Sweet. all right? Of course. And this is my Golden Hour. Directly after No Break High, I'm Scott from Hard Body Meals. And that was my Golden Hour. And then we'll be on this camera, right? Facing the camera. Hey, you too. Thank you. Did you guys have fun? It was a blast. Thanks for having us. Thanks for coming, Scott. Learned yeah, a lot. Man, nice to meet you guys. <laughs> it de host the show now. <laughs> I could be the uh, second in command if you want. You're my guy. You're my guy. All right, ready when you are. I am Scott from Hard Body Meals, and this was my golden hour. Blew it. Totally blew it, Scott. This <laughs> is my golden hour, and then right after, man, that was my golden hour. Say them both in a row? Yes. Just, just those. Hi, I'm Scott, okay. and this is, and then hi, I'm Scott, and that was. Okay. Hi, I'm Scott from Hard Body Meals, and this is my golden hour. Bam, smack, boom. Hi, Scott. Hi, Scott. Uh, <laughs> hey, Scott. How are you, Scott? What up, Scott? Hey. Hi, I'm Scott from Hard Body Meals, and that was my golden hour. Not perfectly executed, but you're a great guy. Thank you, man. Appreciate <laughs> you.